Okay, next step is making the pages to go into the book. So it goes like this. There's a flap and there's a pocket and then there's um, a place for an insert. So basically what it is, whoops, is I make two pieces that are almost identical and I attach them on the sides there. So let me show you how I do that. Okay, so we're going to start off with 12 of 12. And here's what you're going to end up with. I don't know if the camera, I don't know if we got enough space. But you're going to have um, half of your page is going to be where it's got these little tabs. That's where the pocket is. And then there's no other tabs. And then the other half of your pages are going to have the same little tab for the pocket. And then on the other end, there's going to be tabs to attach the other piece to. So here, I'll show you how I did that. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, you'll start with 12 by 12 and you want to cut them down to, to nine inches, nine inches tall. I don't know if you can see that. Cut it down to nine inches. This black cardstock is kind of soft, so it kind of frays a little bit on me. So you want to cut two pieces down to nine inches tall. And that will allow for the um, hinges. Okay. And then you want to score, you want to score them at, turn it this way on your scoreboard. And you want to score them at, let's see, five and a half. and 10. So this piece right here is the pocket. This is the flap. The flap and this is the main base of the page. So then you want to turn it and you want to score a half an inch on each side. Half an inch along that edge and then at eight and a half oh, get glue on me. And then at eight and a half on this edge. So those are going to be your tabs and you're going to have to cut some of those off. So you do that to both sheets. They're both identical. So we're going to do five and a half and then ten and turn it and do half an inch and half an inch or eight and a half inches. So then you want to cut away one of your sheets, you want to cut away all of this on this side, on both sides. You just want to leave the two, the small pocket um, fl little flaps there. So I'm going to do this, you can do this with your cutting, your uh, paper trimmer, but I'm going to do it with my ruler. So you just line it up. Start right there where you want to keep that flap. Then you want to take your scissors and you kind of want to notch it like so. And then notch the other corner. So you end up with um, you end up with that. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. that away, that away, then you end up with that. So you got two, two, um, you got two hinges, flaps, you got two flaps, 
once you cut those pieces off. And then the rest of it, all the other flaps are gone. And then the other piece, cut it just a little bit different. You want to keep the part that's the little little pocket, and you want to keep the base part. So all you want to cut away is this middle piece. So I'm going to do that real quick. So how I did is I just make a cut from score line to score line. And then to trim it off, I just go at an angle again. And just remove that piece. Oops, not really in frame. And just remove that piece. So you're left with this here, this little pocket tab. And then you've got the base tab down here. So you want to do that to all, all the other corners. And I remove this piece here, the middle piece and then tab all the other corners. So you end up with that. You end up with a piece that has a two, a tab at the base, one on top, one on bottom, and a tab for the uh, small pocket, one on top, one on bottom. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to start folding your, your pages. So you want to fold that top pocket down and use a bone folder to smooth it down. And then you want to fold this down towards that base page. Just like that. And then you want to go through, you want to, once you've done that, then you want to flip it over and do these tabs here at the bottom. You just want to give them a good score. I mean, a good uh, burnishing, you know, a page, the shape of our page. So now you want to open this up and you want to fold these little tabs in. Give them a good burnishing. And that way, it folds up like this. So here's your pocket. Here's your flap. And then that's where your insert's going to go and your and next one is going to attach to these. Okay, so I'm going to do it again on, on another one that I have prepared already. So that's the base page because it's got the extra flappy doodles. Okay, and then the, the other page, you start the same way, turn the pocket down, and turn the flap down, burnish, and then, let me see, yeah, and then you wanna do the, the flaps or tabs or whatever you want to call them. So there's your next page. So the way it goes together is there's the one page with the extra flaps. And then this page gets attached to those little flaps or tabs or whatever, which leaves you with the opening for the insert. You flip it, and it goes this way. Right, I'll show you one more time. Okay. All right, in order to attach those down, you can use wet glue, but I'm not going to use wet glue. I'm going to use score tape, a Suquain score tape, and all I'm going to do is on these flaps, I'm going to add a piece, not, not directly on the edge, but close. And if this, if I didn't have these little tabs, then I would have to use wet glue so that the paper, uh, the paper didn't get stuck on it every time. 
So then you take, take your backing off of your score tape. And then you just fold it down. This should match perfectly. So there's one. Let's do the other one. Oops, that's not the one. Let's do the other one. Alright, those two are done. This one you do the same thing with this, this pocket flip. I'm going to flip it over this time though because it's easier to trim it off. So you're still going to use your score tape. And put it back over. Take off that backing. You can use the red tape. You can use any sort of double-sided, acid-free, strong tape for this. Now you do the pocket the same. You do the, you put those down the same way, and then you want to add tape to these. So you don't want to get too close to that uh, score line. You want to have a little bit of wiggle room. If you get it too tight, then it's obviously going to be super tight and you won't be able to insert a lot of things into that side pocket. All right, and flip it over. Oh. Take your score tape off. And then you want to take your other piece that you just finished. So this is the front page. So you want to make sure that when you attach this back page to it, that the flaps are at, at the top. The fold and the flap and the pocket are at the top. So I just like to sit that page down and then I like to line it up with the edge all the way down. So it looks like that and then you do it, turn it over, do it on the other side, line it up. Perfect. Then I open it up, give it a good burnishing down. Alright, so there's one page with the pocket, the flap, there's where the insert goes, you flip it, there's the flap, there's the pocket, and there's the base page, and that's where the hinge will go right here. Alright, let's do the other one. Open it up and burnish it down. So here's your front, you got your flap, you got your pocket, you got your base page, you got your space for your insert, flip it, you got your flap, you got your pocket, your base page. And this is where your hinge goes. Sorry about my doggies, they see the mailman. Alright, now we're going to do the hidden hinge binding. Um, like I said before, it's Laura Dennison. Um, it's her uh, concept, her idea. And you need three pieces for this particular uh, book that we're making. It's, it's, it's got six pages. So we need three, I don't know if you can see it or not. We need three uh, pieces to make, make room for six pages. So your pages, you want to start off, the, the height of them need to be the, the height of your page. So my pages are 8 inches, 8 inches tall. So I'm going to trim these down to 8 inches. I think we need, these are the pieces left over um, from trimming down my, my actual pages. 
think we need two of these. So we start with eight inches and then each one of these are a little bit bigger than the other. So we're going to start with the first one, which is two and a fourth inch wide. Oops. Two and a fourth inch wide. And then the other two are one and a third and one and a quarter. Or I'm sorry, one and three fourths and one and a quarter. But don't worry about it if your paper does that. It's going to be hidden anyways. And then one and a quarter. And this might be one and a quarter, and it is. So we've got one and a quarter. One and three fourths and two and a fourth. So then you want to score them. We'll start with the skinny one first, the one and a quarter. So you want to score them at this one at one and a half and then three fourths. So basically what it's doing is it's giving you a channel, a quarter of an inch channel. Oh, you probably can't see it. Oh, and then it gets blurry. A quarter of an inch channel there. So you're going to have a quarter or um, a half an inch on, on each side. Your hinges are going to be a half an inch on every piece. So then the next one is you score it again at, at a half an inch. And then you can come in a half an inch from this edge, which would be an inch and a quarter. So now you have a half an inch here and a half an inch here, and I believe that is three, three quarters of an inch. The channel on the inside is three quarters of an inch. Then your last piece, you start again with half an inch, and then a half an inch from this edge, which is one and three fourths. So now you should have an inch and three-fourths channel. <clears throat> All right, and then you want to go ahead and fold them in, give them a, a good burnish. All right, so the way this is going to work is this uh, inch and a quarter. It's going to sit in the one that's one and three fourths, and then the one and three fourths is going to sit in the one that is two and a quarter. Yeah, two and a quarter. So it's going to sit in there like this. So that's that's how we're going to make our hidden hinge system. All right. So then we're going to not not on that. Oh yes, yes on that one. So then flip them over, and we're going to add score tape to them to attach them to each other. And then on this one, I am going to run one down the middle just so that it attaches firmly, but I am also going to add uh, fabric tack when I attach it to the cover because I feel like the fabric tack is going to hold on to that canvas a little bit better. Oh, and before before we start attaching them, we want to have all these um, corners, all these ends. It makes it easier for the page to slide down on top of it. Okay, I'm going to start with attaching my little, my smallest one, my inch and a quarter, to my second piece. And I'm just going to eyeball it. I mean, you can measure it, I guess, if you want to. But you basically want a quarter of an inch on each side. So you attach one side down, flip it around, and attach the other side down. So basically, you got a quarter of an inch on each side. Okay. 
And then you want to attach that one to your big And I'm just going to eyeball it again. Quarter of an inch on each side. So there you go. That's how you put that together. That's how you put the hidden hinge together. And I didn't get it exactly perfect over here on this side. It's hanging off just a hair. So I'm just going to trim that off. Alright, so in order to attach it to our cover, to the inside part, the spine part of our cover, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that piece of score tape off. I'm going to add some fabric tuck down one end or one side and the other. And I'm going to eyeball it again. Everything doesn't have to be perfect. So you want to kind of center it, you know, up and down and this way. So because of the fabric tuck, you got a little bit more leeway. Let me just scooch it this way a little bit. I think, I think I got it right in the center. Yeah. So then you just want to press it down really, really, really good. And use your bone folder to press it down. So now you have the hinges that the pages are going to slide down onto. Okay. So there it is. I don't know if you can see. There we go. There's the hinges right inside there. All right, so now we're going to add the pages to the book that I've already got going here. I'm going to show you how to do that. So remember there's a flap with a pocket, and then there's where the insert goes into, and you turn the page, there's your flap with the pocket, and then here is where the, the hinge is going to slip over top of, um, slip over top of this, like so. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this glue, which is Scott Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive, and I'm going to run it along each side of this hinge. I'm not getting it in the not getting it in the channel there. This also gives you a little breathing room, a little time to to work with it too. And then you just want to slip it down over top of that hinge that opening there. You slip it down and make sure it's even with the other pages. And then you just press it together. And then you want to hold it for a minute and let it dry. This stuff dries pretty quick, but you just want to hold it a minute just to make sure. And wipe off any excess glue that you might have. Okay, hey, there's one. I'm going to do it again for this last one. Make sure you don't put the part, the part that's got the opening for the insert and the, the flap attached to it because then you'll have a different book entirely. Okay, now those are those are added into the book, and you want to use the liquid adhesive. It works um, better that way because when you slide your insert down in there, it won't get stuck to the bottom if it's you know the double-sided tape. All right, so now we're going to start cutting the paper for the um, photo mats.
Alrighty, I've got two pieces of 12 by 12 left over from the, you know, that I saved to show you guys. And we're going to cut them down for all the photo mats. So the first thing you want to do is cut your barcode off. And then the first cut you want to make is you want to um, make it the height that you want. So for this, I need a seven and a half inch height. So I'm going to cut cut it to seven and a half inches. And then flip it around this way and then we're going to make some of the photo mats that go on. So you'll you'll need a you'll need a five inch piece. You cut a five inch piece, and then you cut a four inch piece. And those th those are th three of the mats, and then you need to take the piece that you cut off. You need to cut an inch and an uh, inch and a half strip from it, and then you need to cut it to the height, the seven and a half. So what you end up with is you have this. This photo mat that goes on that, then you open your page up, you have the piece that goes on the pocket, that inch and a half strip, and you have the piece that slides in just a little bit to make a photo mat for that, and then you have the main piece that goes right there. So one, one piece of 12 by 12 will cover, you know, one whole side of your pocket. And then this piece is going to be turned into the, the envelope that I showed you in the beginning. So keep that. And then to the seven and a half. Keep these two because we're going to punch the little square that holds the pocket closed out of those. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to do is, I don't know if you noticed or not, but the, the edges are, are, are distressed, kind of giving it a shabby feel to it. But I'm going to use uh, this, the Prima distressing tool. And you just basically you just want to run it back and forth, just like we did on the covers. And don't worry about it when it rips and stuff, it just adds to it. You really got to hold on to the paper when you use this though. Okay, they are all distressed now. All the edges are distressed. And I already have some of the other pages prepared, so I wouldn't have to go through all that with you guys. Let's see. So these go on top. This one, I am pretty sure I see it. So I think the way I've been doing it, I've been these these papers are obviously double sided, so I've been using that to my advantage. So, like since this one's on the flap here, I'm gonna put this side on the flap. So right, what I'm gonna do after I get my little posty off, 
I'm going to take my glue and I'm just using the fabric tuck again. I'm going to wipe it off real fast. You can use any any kind of glue. I like fabric tuck. You can use double sided tape, you can use a tape runner. Um, matter of fact, I'll show you that. I'll use a tape runner. Oops, does this have an up and down? I think it does. Oh, look, I put the glue on the wrong side. I don't know if I can fix that. Oh, this one's just going to have to be matching. That's what happens. You get to talking. And I kind of cut these to where it's like at a quarter of an inch all the way around. So since I made this all matching, I'm going to use my tape runner too. This year. This is just a, the Scotch ATG with um, their acid-free tape in it. And you just want to make sure you got that, you know, have to have a quarter of an inch all the way around. But then I like to do the big piece next. Let's make sure I do this right. I can't believe I messed that up. Obviously the ATG gun is a lot, lot, lot faster. You only want to kind of just make sure you line it up with the other pages. Just because you want it to look nice. Uniform. And then the insert for the pocket. This one doesn't need a whole, whole, whole lot of adhesive because it's only really the top is going to get uh, messed with. So you just kind of slide it, line it up, and that way that you don't see a whole lot of black, you can still see the pattern. Okay, so we got that. Now let's find the pattern that, oh, let's just start from the beginning. So I'm going to start with this piece, oh, camera, that piece. Now we're going to make the inserts, um, these little inserts right here, these little manila, or not manila, uh, ivory cardstock inserts. So we're going to make two, I'll make two with you. So you're going to start off by trimming these down to seven and a half inches. This is just ivory cardstock, eight and a half by eleven. So you want to trim it down to seven and a half inches. You'll need six of these all together for the whole whole book. And then you can either just fold it in half or score it. I like to score it. It just I think it makes it cleaner. So I'm at five and a half. I scored it five and a half. I do this this way I only do the height cut wise is because um, it's just it's a much nicer cut or straight cut if you go ahead and fold it before you make the second cut all right so then you want it to be um, oops the hand not on the folded side but on the open side you want it to be cut down to five and a quarter 
So you're just taking a quarter of an inch off of your folded piece. And then I distressed the edges to match on all of these. So same tool, same thing. Bring the distressing tool. Okay, so these, they fit right down inside this opening here. And there should be about a quarter of an inch sticking out. Give or take a smidge. And it should be exactly the same height as the photo mats that you got there. So now they all have their inserts and the last thing I need to do is make the little um, kind of faux envelope that opens up like this and the little closure here is just a little punch just a little um, square punch this is a McGill and it kind of looks like a postage stamp so I thought it might be kind of cute So what you need are those pieces that you cut off from the 12 by 12 pattern cardstock. You need the two long pieces and you need the two little pieces. So for the long pieces you need to make some scores. And you want to kind of pay attention. This one you don't have to. Oops, do I already have a green one? I, you know, it's not going to matter because I messed that up. Okay, so you want to score at 5 inches. And then you want to go over to 10 inches. So this is your 5 inch score line and then your 10 inch score line. You're going to do that to both pieces. Okay, so then you got these other pieces that are left over. Let me move my scoreboard. Whoop, sorry. Bumped into you. Okay, so all we want to do is we want to punch out a square from this punch. For the closure. And if you want to try to make sure that you get a certain saying or whatever, just pay attention to where you're punching. So then I take, I just take a little bit of the scotch quick dry. Just put a little bit at the very bottom there. And eyeball it. Again, eyeball in it. You don't want to touch the top flap with the glue. So you just want to kind of hold it in place for a second. And then there's your, there's your little closure that keeps it closed. Do the same thing for this one. Okay, so there we have my two little faux envelopes. And they go in the pockets. Just like that. Oops. Oh, where's my other one? Oh. Okay. So, again, this is going to be available on my Etsy shop. And it comes with all of its goodies. All of the stickers and the um, little cut apart pieces and the little extra little, I don't know what you would call those, embellishments. And then you get the jewels and then the layered chipboard pieces. They're really pretty. They're really thick. They're really nice. And then the dimensional stickers that go along with this collection. It's just really pretty. So if you buy this from my Etsy shop, you will get this really awesome scrapbook and all of these 
all of these extras to go with it. So that one's going to be available. And this one's going to be available. And then one more. And this one is going to be available. So when you buy this one, if you buy this one from my shop, you will get the the journaling cards, the set of journaling cards. They're all different shapes and sizes. They go with the collection that I made this book of from Webster's Pages. So you get this, and then you get the fabric tags with a little bling, a strip of bling. And you also get a white um, pen, a Signo, a Univall Signo white pigment pen because on this one I left the pocket uh, just black so that you could write what the pictures are about or uh, what happened that day or and it shows up really nicely on black. So all three of these will be available on my shop um, at Genevieve Designs at Etsy.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.